Good morning everyone, welcome to a new Disney vlog and today I'm off to the Magic Kingdom. I'm going to be spending a few hours there, there's still some stuff I haven't done, I haven't ridden Pirates, I haven't even been much over in that area of the park yet. So I'm going to go and do some of those things and then head across to the Magic Kingdom Resorts to look at the Christmas decorations, particularly the gingerbread house at Grand Floridian. So I'm probably going to go Polynesian as well, maybe over to Fort Wilderness, I might do that a different day, we'll see, I'll see how the day goes. I mentioned in a previous vlog these ears are from Magic maker ears I'll put a link in the description and this dress is from Pour Moi I absolutely love it I have this dress in like five different colors now <laughs> it's the best dress for the parks ever so I just got dropped off at the ticket and transportation center I don't know whether I'll take monorail or ferry I'll see what happens when I get there and um, I had the chattiest Uber driver ever he was really nice actually I had a good chat with him on the way here and the weather today is really really warm again but there's like a nice breeze but it's kind of a warm breeze very strange the weather has been different virtually every day the event is sold out for tonight as always I think all of the Christmas events pretty much have been sold out and one thing I've noticed every single time I go in through security to the parks I always take my umbrella out hold it out in front and every single time they're like yep you're good off you go go in every single time I go through security a ticket and transportation center without fail even though I hold my umbrella out I always have to get my bag searched it always always makes my bag bleep but it doesn't anywhere else just here so I don't know whether their scanners are a little bit more sensitive or something it's weird but it only ever happens here so you have the Magic Kingdom monorail here which is a direct service and just over to the left there will be the resort one you can take either to get to the Magic Kingdom but if you take the resort one it will stop at the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian as well that's good timing and today I definitely want to ride the railroad as well. Whether or not I do the whole loop or just part of it, we will see what happens. And there's been so much Christmas stuff this trip. I should mention that the current fireworks show in the Magic Kingdom that is not um, seasonal or holiday based is Happily Ever After. So Happily Ever After is back. It's my favorite, I love it. Um, I actually prefer it to Wishes, which was around for years and years. So when it's not Christmas party nights, you will get Happily Ever After. I don't even know if I'm gonna get to do that this trip. At this time of year, there are a lot of Christmas parties. I'm not sure how many it is per week, but it is quite a few. I just had a quick look and it seems that Pirates is a 20 minute wait so I'm gonna head in that direction not before grabbing some caffeine it is the middle of the day and I haven't had any coffee yet and before I leave today I'll go into the stores on this side of Main Street because I didn't do that last time and I do believe there's gonna be a bit of rain this evening so I hope anyone at the party tonight doesn't get too soaking wet I feel like I could eat a cheeseburger spring roll right now, but I do want to get that churro thing at some point. I have to think of uh, available stomach space. I might come back for it, maybe. Just wondering what the wait time is like for Jingle Cruise at the moment. It's usually pretty high. Let's see, though. Yeah, 60 minutes. I do want to experience this on this trip, because it's got the holiday jingle overlay. And you can't take drinks on the Jungle Cruise, but I'll finish this coffee by the time we get on, and you're allowed to have it in line. I don't think this is going to be an hour long wait at all. We will see though. Okay, not only was it not 60 minutes, it was a walk on. Quite literally a walk on. That's so weird. And it looks like we're going to be on Bertha today. I'm not sure that I've ever done this with the holiday overlay. Yeah, she knows exactly what she did. That's Kylie. Our world famous for being famous around the world. attention I am the middle child of my family we are all on the lookout for missing presents okay oh. air dropped cargo that did not reach its intended destination you just can't trust delivery these days I'm gonna be your guide I'm also gonna be your snake charmer your lion tamer your hippo wrangler the sunny never wanted the brother you never had your tree trimmer your stocking stuffer your snowballer Christmas caroler popcorn singer and your secret Santa here we have a festive arrangement of animals it's actually a wide variety so wide in fact it goes from there 
to there. And hey, look, these lions are celebrating the season with a festive feast. And they invited a zebra. That is so generous, am I right? On either side of the boat, say hello to the hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> hey, now watch. They're pretty aggressive, but I'm going to scare them off like I scared off my last five relationships. I love you! <laughs> Do you want to meet my parents? <laughs> Mallory, I'll tell you when you're older, it works every time, believe me. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. The astounding, the amazing backside of water! Yeah, no reason to be embarrassed, you guys. <laughs> they all have their trunks on today. In fact, I... Oh! Oh, stop, 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 stop. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry guys, I, I'm still getting used to driving this thing in the day. It's honestly... No! No, Mallory, watch out! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh no! Sorry, that's my favorite part of the tour. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, you guys. I didn't mean to scare you, but I did. I've been on the naughty list for six years now. Uh, seriously, folks, we're family, whether you like it or not. And I'm sure you're painfully well aware ten minutes of your family during the holidays. It's, it's way too much. You also happen to see something up there, sir, that does belong to you. Please let me know, all right? We'll get it to you at the end of the tour. And guys, I gotta be honest. You are my favorite boat of the day. Seriously. You're also my first boat of the day, so you really uh, set that bar pretty high. Now, hey, let's get you moving, folks. Seriously, uh, we are very superstitious creatures here at the World Famous Jingle Cruise. We are seafaring folk after all, so there's only one thing left to say to people like you on a day like today in a boat like this with a skipper like me. From the bottom of my tiny, tacky, shriveled up little bridge heart to the top of this tacky, tacky, barely seaworthy vessel, I've been waiting to say this since the moment you got on board. So, from the bottom of my heart, get out. I've just got off the ride. That was so good. There seems to be a queue forming now. I think there was a parade just when I got on it. So it may have been a 60 minute wait previously, but I just walked right on. And I've always been a little bit on the fence about that ride, but I have to say that was amazing and totally changed my mind about it. Skipper Andrew that we had, he was absolutely amazing. So funny. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad I jumped in line and I met a lovely family who were on the same boat as me. So hi to you guys if you're watching. And now it's definitely time for pirates. I don't think I've ever gone this long on a trip without riding pirates. It's one of my favourites. And we've got a 10 minute wait. That'll do nicely. Ah! Oh my gosh! <laughs> no! I'm soaked! I got soaked there. I never normally sit in row one and between the drop and all the water that kind of came up there and the cannonball that landed right next to us, I got absolutely soaked. So I need to dry off now. My dress is all wet and I think I'm going to head over and see what the wait time is for Big Thunder Mountain and then probably from there I will get on the train I think. Oh we have the parade coming through here so I won't currently be walking through to Big Thunder. I'll have to wait a minute. to Pecos Bill here. I do need to eat something, so maybe while the parade's going on, it's very quiet in here. Myself and Pecos Bill did break up a few years ago when they changed the menu drastically. I haven't eaten here for quite some time, but maybe it is time to try it out. That veggie rice bowl looks quite nice. Ended up going for the kids rice bowl, so it's the exact same thing, but just the kids version, and it comes with a drink, and it also came with a little mandarin and some apple slices as well. And I also got the chips and queso. And my total for this was $14.89. It's got a tiny bit of like, I wouldn't even say spice, just like almost spice, but not. It's a kid's meal, so it is not spicy. But yeah, really nice flavor. And it's something a bit different for a kid's meal as well. Usually it's like chicken tenders and stuff and macaroni and cheese. They did have that, but this is just something a little bit different. Let's try the um, chips and queso. Yeah, for the 
price. I think this is a really good lunch. In fact, it comes with a drink and the fruit and stuff as well. It's a little bit healthier than some other options. Okay, I've finished that now, and I just wanted to come back on and mention the more I ate of the like veggie rice and beans thing, it was a little tiny bit spicy. I just thought I'd mention it because it is a kid's meal, and I know a lot of kids cannot tolerate any spice at all, so it just had a little bit of heat. But when I say a little bit, I mean a small amount. So my way to Big Thunder Mountain, and I just sort of zoom in, you can see quite a lot of the trees and greenery and stuff. definitely making progress and I'm just over here by Big Thunder Mountain I'm a bit shorter on time than I had thought I just looked at the time so what I'm gonna do is go on to the railroad now from here and I'm back in a couple of days so I will do Big Thunder Mountain then I have today and one other day left in the Magic Kingdom on this trip, so I've just been figuring out which rice to do on which day, and um, there's a few snacks that I wanna get. I still wanna get that Christmas churro snack, but I also wanna get the popcorn on Main Street. So, plan of action, I'm gonna get on the train here, I'm gonna go around to the Main Street stop and get off there, and then I can go in the stores along Main Street, not the Emporium, the other side, the ones that we haven't looked at yet, and then I'll be able to go and get the popcorn before I exit to go across to the resorts. First up is gonna be Grand Floridian, to check out that gingerbread house. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. It's beautiful there at this time of year. I feel the need to ride this train as much as possible. It was closed for such a long time, literally years, I think, while Tron was being built. So it's nice to be able to ride this again. You can get a little look over the construction walls here. Can't see an awful lot. Howdy, folks! If you're just joining us, a hearty welcome aboard. Everybody stay seated and keep your hands and arms, feet and legs safely inside the train. And as always, keep an eye on your little ones. Considering how wonderful things are out here, I'm fortunate that some of my closest friends call it home. We're coming down the track and headed straight for the stupendous, the sensational, the spectacular, epic Fantasyland Storybook Circus. Some airborne acrobatics. This station is also your gate. For those disembarking, please watch your step and thanks for traveling with us. I hope you join us again real soon. The next leg of our journey takes us to Main Street, USA. Next up is a place that's always ahead of the curve. And not just because we're on a straightaway. <laughs> our metropolis of mechanical marvels, Tomorrowland. We're now approaching our most charming destination, Main Street, USA. A place where the only thing sweeter than the townsfolk is the treats. Welcome to Main Street, USA. Okay, we got very, very heavy rain here. So I'm gonna take a dash across to Main Street Confectionery. If I can even get in there, I think it's gonna be very busy in there right now. This shower has been brewing for several hours. I could tell it was gonna downpour. Yep, this is what happens when a rain shower starts. It's not too bad, we can still see things. I'm really tempted to try those Skittle fudge bites, which are in that little package there. I think I'm gonna to stick to the popcorn for today though. And you can get a little look behind the scenes here. I can see a bowl of freeze-dried Skittles on the corner of that counter there. It's really interesting watching the cast members making these. So you can choose your flavour of popcorn, select a syrup, and then combine with candies. So I'm getting butter flavour popcorn, and I'm gonna get milk chocolate syrup. And I don't know what toppings yet. in this bag I will show you guys as soon as I get to a dry area as you can see people are on the move again coming in for the party I'm gonna be exiting I think after I've been in the stores on Main Street but I'm gonna go and try and do that first 
The rain has eased off a little bit, so it may not be quite so busy in there. I really hope it doesn't rain all evening for the people who are at the party tonight. It's the 10th of December. If you were there, I really hope you didn't get rained on all night. That did happen to me in 2021 and it was not fun. Head into Main Street Cinema first. I do love the theming in this store. And in here they have a lot of the classic Mickey Walt Disney World stuff. And this is a lunch tote. I feel like you wouldn't get a lot of lunch in there, although I think it is actually quite deep. It just doesn't look that big from the front. And they do have a lot of the ears in here as well. So you can get them in here, in the Main Street Emporium, and in that little store I showed you right at the front of the park last time we were here. I do love these new ones, and the Wish ears too. They're very nice. If I had space, I would probably buy the Wish plushie that we saw. And they have a new arrival here, which is the Dooney and Burke range. And it's an Elsa bag. They have the little wallet here with all the characters on. Dooney and Burke is pricey, so these will be like hundreds of dollars. $298 to be exact for the bag. They also have this Dooney and Burke range, which is kind of like, is, I always get this wrong, is that embossed? I think that's how you say it, but if you want something that's not quite as out there, but you still want like Disney theming, this is really nice. It does say Walt Disney World and Disneyland on the front there. And that one is $328. They do have this slightly smaller version that is $268. I can't remember if we've seen the Wish lounge fly bag yet. I think we've seen this. I've seen a lot of lounge flies the last 10 days. I'd really like a pair of earrings and my friend gave me some money for my 40th. So I'm thinking I might buy a pair of earrings with it. These pearl ones are nice. They're 125 though, kind of pricey. And back here you have all the Pandora items. I wonder if they have any earrings. Well, they do have a little set of like Mickey head ones. Oh, one's Mickey and one's Minnie, they're cute. Typically the ones I like the best are these and they are $1,500, so I think not. <laughs> Would be nice though, wouldn't it? They actually have so many nice ones. Look at these little balloons. They're very cute too. I've taken photos of all the ones I like. I need to assess it and decide which pair I like. So I want to make sure I make the right decision. I'll be back here in a couple of days. And I think I'm going to head out of here now and go across to the Grand Floridian. Like I was saying, I'm going to show you all of the decorations, but I'll also probably answer a few more of your questions. I did some in the last vlog. I had so many that I will um, sit down somewhere in the resorts and do that. And definitely eat some of this popcorn and show you what it looks like close up. I haven't seen these M&Ms before. Caramel cold brew. That must be a new flavour. I can't remember if I followed up on this. I bought this when I was in the Magic Kingdom last time and these are freeze-dried Skittles. I actually really liked it. They still definitely had their flavour but they were like really crunchy. I can highly recommend this. I've never seen freeze-dried Skittles anywhere else. Once again, this performance of the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade has been cancelled. Thank you. Oh, not again. That happened the other day while I was here. And the monorail lines are pretty horrible. This is for the express monorail. I wonder if the boat's running. Maybe I'll get the boat. Yeah, let's go for the boat. This looks a lot more reasonable. Might be a bit damp, but I'm still a little damp from pirates, to be honest. You can also walk. It's that pathway to the right-hand side, but I don't want to risk a rain shower on the way there. It's not a long walk, but it's like kind of not that short. You can see the Grand Floridian over there to the left, so you can see how far it is. Wouldn't be fun if you got caught in the rain. <laughs> There's some ducks that are trying to get on the boat. Oh gosh, we've arrived to more rain. Oh, Disney are the best. Disney really do take care of you in ways like that. When it's raining, they do have towels available if there's heavy rain and you've just walked in. This resort is by far the most amazing with the Christmas decorations as you walk in, I think. We'll get closer in a second to this tree. Here's the gingerbread house. It is always very busy in here at this time of year though. Okay, let's take a look at this popcorn. We saw it getting made earlier. I had chocolate sauce, the milk chocolate, marshmallows, peanut butter M&Ms, and like crumbled Oreo cookies. It's $13.99 and I had annual pass discount, so I think it was $11.19. It is a big thing that you get this in and it does come with a lid so you can kind of take it with you. I've been meaning to try it for ages, ever since that location has been there. It's called Colonel Kitchen. It's in the same store as the Main Street Confectionery. Okay, let's give this a go. The one thing I was wondering is whether the sauce kind of sticks it together. And it does kind of, but it's still easy to pick it up and eat it. 
Okay, I get the hype now for this popcorn. That is really, really good. Okay, I've been waiting quite some time for things to quiet down and it is just not really happening. It is very, very busy here at the Grand Floridian tonight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you everything as best I can. I'm gonna go up to the second level in a minute so we can kind of look down at it. You'll probably be able to get a better look there. This line has been this long the entire evening. But if I get as up close as I can, you can see the detail. And the reason this line is here, they do have items that you can purchase, like Christmas, snacks, and things like that. So it's open daily, 9 a.m. till 9.30 p.m. So probably after 9.30, you'd be able to maybe get a good picture of this without too many people around. And just to show you the tree a little bit closer, this tree really is huge. Like I said, if I go up onto the second level, we might be able to get a bit of a better look. And they do have some sofas and places to sit up here. It's just a little bit less chaotic. It's not normally this busy here at the Grand Floridian, but with the Christmas decorations, as you can see, <laughs> there are a lot of people here tonight. And this line over here is a line of people waiting to have their photo taken by the photo pass photographer next to the tree. So it's definitely a busy night here. If I zoom in there, you can kind of see the gingerbread house a little bit better actually from up here. And I'll go around the other side so we can see it from all angles. It's definitely the most impressive display they have at any of the resorts, I would say. If you watched my vlog the other day, I went around to some of the others, but this one is definitely the highlight that everyone comes to see. And this is where you'll find Citrico's restaurants and Victoria and Albert's. And also on this level is the Enchanted Rose Lounge. Looking down here, you can see the little shop where you can buy cookies and stuff like that. So the gingerbread house itself is actually a little store, which is cute. Even if you're not staying here, you can come to the Enchanted Rose Lounge for a drink. And there is a photo pass photographer taking pictures by the gingerbread house too. So if you do have photo pass included in your ticket, this is quite a good place to come to get some nice Christmassy pictures. And just to complete getting every angle of the gingerbread house, I'm just around at the other side now. I would imagine during the day it might not be as crazy as this, but I actually haven't been over here during the day on this trip. Maybe it's this busy all the time, I don't know. And all the staircases are beautifully decorated as well. Okay, I found this little corner and I think this is honestly the only place in the entire hotel that is going to be quiet enough for me to answer a few of your questions. I honestly did not expect it to be quite this crazy. I don't know why I should have probably expected that it would be. I was talking to some subscribers that I just met actually and um, they were also saying the same thing. I don't know that I would like staying here when the lobby is this crazy at this time of year. I've loved staying at the Grand Floridian before and I definitely love this resort. It's my home DVC resort but if I was actually a guest here I think I might find it a little bit crazy that it's this busy in the lobby all the time. I would almost feel a tiny bit irritated to be honest if I paid all that money and it was just completely crazy here all the time. And obviously people are gonna come here to look around. I'm doing the exact same thing. Like it's completely normal for people to want to see the gingerbread house and they do put these things here for people to come and see. But I think if you were a guest at the hotel, it could be a little bit crazy having it be this busy. So I'm actually not 100% sure I would recommend staying here at Christmas. Definitely come and visit, but it is just kind of frantic and busy and not in any way relaxing. I have just noticed across the room someone is wearing the Christmas tree hoodie that I wore to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party in 2018. I will insert a picture filled with a little Christmas tree hood. Someone's wearing the exact same one. I got it from Target. So let me do a few of your questions while I'm here. Shannon is asking what's your recommendations for when to use Genie Plus and how to get the best value from it. I actually don't use Genie Plus. When I say not very often, I mean virtually never, to be honest. I did when it first came out. I used to use it quite a bit just to test it. But these days, I really, really don't find that I need to. I think if you were here at an extremely busy time, so maybe if you were here 
like right on Christmas or like Easter or something, like very, very busy times or US holidays. It really depends what park you're in. The two parks that I use it most often for are Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom. It works well in the Magic Kingdom because there are so many attractions, so you do tend to always be able to get something if you're looking for return times. And Hollywood Studios, there are less attractions there, but they have several that get very, very long wait times and are very difficult to get onto at times without some kind of return time. So Hollywood Studios, I occasionally will use it there. What I would recommend if you are going to use Genie Plus is make sure you are online dead on the 7am. So you can purchase it after midnight, I believe. So I tend, if I'm awake, I tend to actually purchase it that evening, ready for the next morning. Otherwise, set your alarm so that you can purchase it before seven and be ready at seven to make those return times. If you're going to Hollywood Studios, I would recommend trying to get Slinky Dog Dash first. I always find that one goes the quickest. And if you're not quick enough, you can get a return time that's like seven or eight o'clock in the evening. And that may not be convenient. You might have planned to have left by then. So I would definitely try and get Slinky Dog Dash first. I I don't tend to ever use it at Animal Kingdom to be honest. If I was going to pay for anything, it would be an individual lightning lane for flight of passage, and I do frequently do that. That's the only time I ever pay for lightning lanes, really, is flight of passage. And over in Epcot, you've got a virtual line of the Guardians anyway, so you don't really need to have anything like that. And the only other rides there that get a long wait time are Frozen and Ratatouille. And usually, if you hit those things first thing in the morning or last thing at night, then it's not too busy. So I would only ever recommend using it really in Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios, personally. Vicky asked how's the construction of Splash Mountain coming along. I showed you that in today's vlog, so hopefully that's answered the question. Erin is saying, how do you get over the Disney blues? Just got back and it's so bad. I totally get you with the Disney blues. I have to say I don't get them as much nowadays as I used to because I come out here more often. But when I used to come to Disney World like every other year, sometimes every year if I was lucky, but usually every other in the early days, I used to get the Disney blues so bad. And I find the best ways to get over it is first of all, planning your next trip. Even if you're not in a position to book it yet and you need to save up and what have you, I would get onto planning it, thinking about where you would wanna stay and how you're gonna save and all that kind of stuff, which restaurants you wanna go to. So get into planning the next one. Another thing that's good is obviously watching vlogs. I have tons of them, I have got you covered if you want to watch Disney vlogs I've got a playlist of all of my Disney vlogs actually and you can just let that run um, another thing that I find is really good is making a photo book of all of your photos from the trip that you've just done there's quite a few different companies I've used Popsa before and uh, you can create a really nice photo book they're really nice to create for gifts actually as well for people um, so putting together like a scrapbook or a photo book you could keep bits and pieces to actually make a physical scrapbook if you prefer Oh, and the other thing is listening to Disney music. So on my um, Apple Music on my phone, I have all of the firework music from Epcot, a lot of the Magic Kingdom music. So yeah, vlogs, listening to music, make yourself a scrapbook or a photo book and plan your next trip. Alice is asking pros and cons for going to Disney at this time of year. This time of year obviously being December, just in case you're watching this years later or something. Um, pros definitely are the atmosphere and just the general kind of Christmassy vibe. It is very, very magical, especially in the Magic Kingdom. The decorations are beautiful. The decorations here at the resorts are beautiful as well. So definitely just the feel of it at Christmas is really, really nice. Secondly, it's a bit cooler. So even though I have had some quite hot days on this trip, it's definitely cooler than it is in the summer months. So I would say weather is another big plus. The downsides to it um, can be crowds. It can get quite crowded for the Christmas party or it definitely does get crowded for that. Generally, I would say it's busier than I experienced when I was here in September. So just kind of wandering around, it is a little busier. And when you come to the resorts and things like that, usually me coming to the Grand Floridian would be a nice relaxing break. This is about as far from a nice relaxing break as it gets. So if you've escaped the park to come here to relax, that is not gonna happen when you're here at Christmas. There are so many people here getting their photos as you just saw. So I would pick a different resort if you were gonna um, relax. It really is just the Grand Floridian that um, everybody comes here. You probably would be all right over at Wilderness Lodge or 
probably the Polynesian, although that can be a little busy as well. But um, yeah, probably the busyness is one of the, the bigger downsides. ZC Colic is saying, what's the best way to work out where to eat at Disney? There are so many choices. I would say the best ways are to just look at menus ahead of time. So there are websites like All Ears are very good. They have all of the Disney menus. Or you can just look on the Disney World app. To be honest, I would say watching the vlogs is a good way. So there's lots of different Disney vlogs out there. Obviously, I will give a little shout out for mine. I try and go to lots of different restaurants. So again, my backlog of vlogs, there's plenty of restaurants that you can look at. But yeah, really just looking at the menus and making sure that there's something there that you would like. Because some of the restaurants do have quite small menus, I will say. And sometimes I would struggle to actually pick something from some of the menus. So definitely make sure you've checked that out ahead of time. I'll just do a couple more while I'm here. Chloe is asking, what's changed since you first started going to Disney? What do you want brought back? To be honest, what I would love brought back is Fast Pass as it used to be. I really did prefer it when you used to be able to book your three Fast Passes. So it used to be the case that everybody, as long as you had either an annual pass or whatever park admission you had, everybody could book three Fast Passes. And once you had ridden those, you could then book more once you've used them. And I much preferred that system. That way you knew that you were going to be able to get onto three different rides at a certain times of the day. The old system with the paper tickets, was not my favourite because you had to like run to attractions in the morning. I remember running to Toy Story Midway Mania as it used to be when it first opened and that was always crazy trying to get to the ticket machine quickly. So I actually preferred the system that they had before Genie Plus where you could just book your three and everybody could do that. So I wish that they would bring that back. The Craft Gem is asking what is the best and safest way to stay at or near Walt Disney World on a budget for a solo traveller? So definitely the safest way is to stay at Disney. I have never once in all of my trips when I'm staying in a Disney resort felt unsafe at any moment. You've got transportation that takes you everywhere and it just isn't a situation where you ever really feel unsafe. I certainly never have. I am staying off site for most of this trip and I haven't felt unsafe where I'm staying to be honest. You do have to just make sure that you are always being vigilant obviously and I had an incident last night like somebody was outside having a really loud conversation conversation at four o'clock in the morning and I really wanted to open my door and ask them to lower their voice because it was 4am but I didn't feel safe to do that because I didn't want to open my door and I'm by myself and it just felt a bit weird so there can be the odd thing like that where I just wouldn't confront someone in the middle of the night outside my hotel room door if that makes any sense whereas if I was at Disney I probably would I don't know why it makes a difference but it does and I use Uber to get around everywhere um, I've never felt unsafe to be honest maybe some people's driving has felt a bit unsafe I've definitely been in Ubers where it's like Mr Toad's Wild Ride but in terms of feeling unsafe they do have some safety features with Uber so you can click to tell somebody where you're going which is not overly helpful if somebody's back in the UK for example but they can see your journey and if it looked as if they were taking you somewhere completely different or something I always just feel a little bit more secure if I know somebody can see my journey I don't do that very often but I have once or twice um, switched that feature on while I've been in the Uber also when somebody accepts your ride on Uber you can always click on their profile just to make sure that you feel comfortable with their rating so a lot of people have a very high rating Rating, but if I clicked on someone and they were brand new to Uber and they only had like four trips under their belt I wouldn't feel totally good about that when I'm on my own if I was with someone else I probably wouldn't care um, but in those sort of situations you can I think if you do it quick enough cancel the trip and get somebody else but to be honest most people who pick me up in Ubers around here have done like hundreds if not thousands of rides before and they have a good rating so with uber if people have a bad rating they'll get kicked off and they won't be able to do it anymore so i've personally never had a bad situation i would just stay with hotels that either have been recommended so maybe someone can tell you that they've stayed there before like i have stayed at sonder on this trip i've had no bad experience and i'm a solo traveler on my own so stick to recommendations i would say don't stay in any hotels that seem a bit sketchy or if you look at TripAdvisor the reviews are sketchy stay away from anything like that but mainly I would say try and go with a recommendation where someone said they've stayed there and felt perfectly fine but if you stay at a Disney resort it is fine I've never for a second felt unsafe 
uh, staying at Disney, I really haven't. So I'm gonna leave that there. I just wanted to answer a few more of your questions because I didn't get round to as many as I wanted to yesterday because I just had so many questions from you guys. And I was gonna go over to the Polynesian after this, but I have just realized that I'm going to the Polynesian in two days time because I'm eating at Ohana. So I'll be able to show you all of their Christmas decorations then and to show you around the resort in general. So there's no point in going there now when I'm literally going in two days time. So I'm gonna head back now, I think, to the resort and obviously I'll finish up the vlog. Today was another quite relaxed day. I tend to find towards the end of my trip I have more days that are either a bit more relaxed, a bit shorter days where I've just gone to the park in the afternoon for a few hours. And if you're ever getting an Uber from the Grand Floridian back to your hotel or wherever you're going, you wanna be here on the ground floor. Let's get one last look at that amazing tree. It is beautiful. And you want to go out of these main doors that are by the check-in desks and this is where you would go to get your Uber. And I'm sure most of you will know this by now but I do still run into subscribers who have said they didn't realise until watching my vlogs. If you're staying at an off-site hotel in a villa or anywhere else, not at Disney, you can come to any of the Disney resorts to look around, to eat in the restaurants, to just take a break in the middle of the day. Anyone can come to the Disney resorts, anyone can use the Disney transportation as well. You don't have to be staying here for that. Hello everyone, as you can see I'm now back at home. It was another one of those days where I must have gone back to my resort and totally forgotten to end the vlog. I think when I get towards the end of a trip I do start getting more tired. Sometimes when I'm getting back to the room I am practically crawling back and uh, I just didn't end the vlog that day so I thought I would quickly come on and do that. It's getting towards the end of this trip now. I have another one coming up probably only a few weeks now yeah until I'm there again in the spring for Flower and Garden Festival. New restaurants, new travel buddy, well not new travel buddy returning travel buddy um, but I am going with someone on that trip very excited for it we can't wait we've got lots of things planned um, so if you haven't already subscribed please do and tap the bell icon that way you'll be notified when a new vlog goes up thank you guys so much as always for watching this vlog taking the time out of your day everything that you do to be supportive I really do appreciate all of you so much and of course to everyone who comes up to say hello in the parks as well I love talking to you all I've got lots more Disney travel coming up this year including Disneyland Paris that will be coming soon I haven't done that for a while so stick around if you are wanting more Disney content some Disneyland Paris and potentially something else a little bit different later in the year um, I always want to bring different types of content and there are some Disney parks and Disney experiences that I haven't done yet so hopefully that'll be coming later this year. I hope you guys are all well and having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! But the inside of the restaurant is looking fabulous as ever. I love it in here. It's quite a small restaurant and they were turning away more cups when I got here.